Ladies and gentlemen, come gather in, come gather in, come gather around. Woo! Today, we're talking compliance, suspension compliance, and namely on this little beastie right here, where through a comedy of my own choices, I made a rear suspension that isn't really compliant. It's legally compliant, but it's not, it doesn't move quite nice. Compliance is a fancy term, which here means movable. It allows for movement. I didn't. Here's what I did. I originally did the entire suspension bushings with ultra high molecular weight polyethylene plastic, essentially cutting board plastic, which is very slippery. That's cool. Uh, and very rigid, which in racing is cool. And in this front suspension, it's very, very cool. It works good. It slips, it moves, it, it controls everything. It doesn't allow this to move out of whack. It keeps these control arms pivoting in this location and it doesn't deviate from it. This is an awesome place for ultra high molecular weight polyethylene or Delrin or polyurethane or plastic, anything. This is a good way to go. The problem, is over there. In the back, a non-compliant bushing becomes a problem. In here, yeah, these trailing arms can pivot up and down, I guess around that pivot point, and this one can do the same thing. However, there's another component of suspension happening here. If I hit a bump, yeah, it goes up and down, those bushings will work. However, if I hit a one-wheel bump, those trailing arms have to kind of do this and those bushings will not allow that at all. And this car was actually an oversteer handful with the plastic bushings in the back and I took all of them out except for that bottom bolt right there. That one is still plastic. All the bolts are 3 8 That's a half inch bolt which is DOT required for seat belts. And yes, I'm sharing a control arm bolt with a seat belt bolt. Oh my gosh, Mr. Wallet, how could you possibly be sharing a suspension bolt with a seat belt bolt? Isn't that dangerous? I would trust a suspension bolt to hold me into the car, all 98 pounds of me, just saying, if it can't hold me and the freaking suspension, I probably shouldn't be using it. Ah, nuts. I now have a box here we are. So we got swedge tubes, spherical rod ends, complete with jam nuts, and a cool sticker, and a fuel fitting for the 61 Apache. Let's have a look at what we got here. All right. Swedge tubes. You can get these in a bunch of different lengths. And they're usually threaded male and female for reasons I'd rather not get into. And then we use the right spherical rod end. They also call these rose joints in the UK. Heim joints. Heim is just a company that makes these. These ones are by uh, Moroso or Competition Engineering. Ah, I guess I don't need that. This, better thread in here. Okay, so this is a reverse thread nut. And some manufacturers put like notches on the threads so you know it's a reverse thread. Not so this one apparently. I got a one in two chance to get... Oh, nailed it. I got mad tight skills, dog. Me wasting my life as a school teacher. Kidding, kidding. So you thread these all in. And I know these may not last as long. They are Teflon lined. So they should work. That one looks like a normal thread. They thread these, they thread these in opposite threads so that you can just loosen the lock nut and turn the tube and it would get longer and shorter. When I made all the trailing arms on that Super 7, I made them, what the Sam heck? I made them 12 inches long, so all I gotta do is adjust this to be 12 inches long and they should bolt right in. I will have to drill one hole bigger because 
One end is still using a 3 8 bolt. Hopefully I can get a drill in there. The other end is a uh, half inch because that's shared for the seat belt. I am so looking forward to these. As Now we've got to figure out some spacers because these are a lot shorter, narrower than the bushings that I have. Thankfully Moroso gives us some scratch paper. So I know the square tube that I made for the brackets are two inches wide and they are 120 wall. So that's like an eighth of an inch. So if I take two inches, minus, minus an eighth, minus an eighth, that's a quarter. So it's going to be one and three quarter inches inside. These are five eighths of an inch. So let's make this easy. Let's make that six eighths. Six eighths inside minus five eighths. That's going to leave an inch and an eighth left, which I have to divide by two which will be uh, half an inch and a sixteenth, which would be 0.565, roughly, that I need to make bushings. Good thing I don't teach math, eh? So I set a stop on my horizontal bandsaw at about 565 thousandths of an inch. I'm going to cut up this bottle jack handle that belongs to my father's bottle jack. I don't know what happened to the bottle jack, but this was the handle for it. Uh, it's a half inch diameter and a good thick wall. I think this will be perfect. Here we go. To show you what I mean about compliance, I'm going to jack up one side of the car until this wheel comes off the ground. We'll measure it with a tape measure. Then we'll put in the spherical rod ends and then we'll do the same test and see if it changes. In theory, it should change. It should be able to have the car move more before the wheel comes off the ground. If the car moves and the wheel comes off the ground, you get wheel spin off the one wheel or uh, it unweights part of the car, you overload a tire and you spin. So to make it handle better, you want the compliance. Let's see what we got. We gotta move the camera down so you can see. Ah, come on, tape measure. You're not locking tape measure. All right, so the bottom of the car is lined right up at the 10 inch mark on the tape measure. Now I'm gonna jack up the car until this wheel comes off the ground. Release the e brake so it's more noticeable to see when it comes off the ground and we're in neutral. Here we go. All right, it's off the ground at this point, and the chassis is now nine and five eighths. So that is an inch and five eighths of height change here, and this wheel comes off the ground. I'm hoping to increase that by changing those rod ends. Oh, my favorite, hammered, trim clad, whoa! The thicker the better.
so far, it seems a lot more sure-footed. Um, it's, it didn't really change the handling a lot, but it just it feels a whole lot better. So let's jack it up and uh, see if it made a numerical difference. All right, it's the same as before. I got the tape measure just set at the 10 inch mark. We're gonna jack it up till this wheel comes off the ground. I guess I should yeah, release the e-brake. All right, off the ground. Well, looks like we are at nine and five eighths again. So whoop de frickin' do. But it feels better. <clears throat> it does feel better. So I think I'm happy. So I really like how it feels in the back with the proper bushings. One of the things with these because I was sharing the bolt for the seat belt, I couldn't run a sleeve in here. You need to have a little steel sleeve in the bushing, and I couldn't for this, which meant I couldn't tighten the bolts up all the way, which means there's a little bit of slop. And with suspension arms, if you have a little bit of slop, before too long you have a whole lot of slop. And this thing would be clunk, clunk, clunk on and off the gas. And when you punch it, the thing would try to cross the center line. And when you lift, it would try to head for the ditch. And if I measured these, I'm sure these are oblong. So I like it. I like the rod ends. And I really think that I'm going to replace the upper trailing arms and the pan hard with the same thing. Just to get rid of the non-compliance that the rubber bushings do because these are not they're not there's not a lot of there's, there's not a lot of room in here for there to be any give with the rubber so I'm going to change those and we'll see what happens after that there have been some studies along the low cost Super 7 replica crowd where a parallel trailing arm with a pan hard actually has quite a bit of binding and a better rear suspension is a three length of the pan hard where you got two trailing arms usually on the bottom uh, and then a single trailing arm in the center on the top although you could probably do it reversed with a pan hard so a three link is a better way to go with like no compliance issues at all that's going to go in super seven number two until then thanks for watching